Omar Masitsa from who's a communication specialist at Kekteni that's uh, Kenya ICT Action Network. Karibu sana Nema. So much for having me here. I'm glad Stephanie. to have you. Yeah, looking nice. Thank you. Looking glamorous too, as well. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, mm. how did you celebrate yesterday, International Women's Day? Oh my goodness, it was a remarkable day. Um, what we did is we attended meetings in regards to the International Women's Day, mm -hmm. um, just celebrating great, the greatness of what women have have been achieving so far in the internet space and in the tech space. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tell us a little bit about Kicktin and where you're working. What do you? Um, what's your mission? All right. The Kenya ICT Action Network is a network whereby we involve persons and institutions who are in the initiative to develop tech and ICT policies, and also are interested in that initiative as well. So we rely on actually four pillars. The, pillar, mm -hmm. the pillars include policy advocacy. And we have capacity building, we have research, and we have the stakeholder management. So if I can break it down is mm -hmm. when we come to policy advocacy, we here uh, interact with stakeholders, different stakeholders, to come up uh, about with policies that will help us in advancing this tech. Okay. And also we have the capacity building, whereby um, from those policies they have gotten, we use the policies in our space to hold events whereby we teach about tech as we follow the policies, because policies in this case are very important. Okay. And then we have the research whereby we take the we take the policy advocacy and we take the capacity building to be research based because we did evidence, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, okay. and for the stakeholder engagements, we do them online. Mm -hmm. And also we have um, town hall meetings and we also have a mailing list that is above uh, 35,000 people engaging. So it is a really good space to, in, to talk about tech. Wow, amazing. You're revol revolutionizing tech yeah. in <laughs> Kenya at least. Yes, at least. How is it for you? Uh, would you say you are, you are a woman in tech? You're a lady in tech, yes? Yes. How, how is the space for you? Um, I can say the space is really um, a challenge as per now, mm -hmm. but it's not a challenge that you cannot overcome. Okay. Everything starts with a challenge and then it develops to something that is even bigger than us. Because mm -hmm. if we look at it as a challenge, we will not be able to develop in tech. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we, we're going to talk about some of those challenges later on. Yeah. But first, maybe you can help us, you know, get some background uh, around International Women's Day. Kuna watu nilipata na wajana sabi, oh, ni International Women's Day. Inakuanga ama ini alisia pekeke. You know, some people don't even know it exists. Yeah. But it started long ago. Long ago. It started Tell in the mm -hmm. year 1911. But mm -hmm. then it wasn't considered um, the International Women's Day. So okay. that is about 112 years ago. Imagine. And then Centu we came to the... Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> then we now have the UN who identified it to be on March the 8th in, in the year 1975. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And now we, yeah. what, is the, what do we need to celebrate women? And what's the importance of this year's theme? Exact, uh, you know, this year's theme is digital and, you know, it's digit and all. And then innovation and technology for gender equality. Yes, the theme is innovation and, uh, and technology for gender equality because um, what we are critically looking at here is the rights of women when it comes to this digital space. Mm -hmm. Because without having th these rights of women being catered for, we cannot have innovations or technology. So it's just shedding a light on how women and girls can be able to engage in this digital space. Okay. Yeah, so that is the critical thing we need to look about. We, look, to we look need to look into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also we, lo we yeah. look like uh, the ICT uh, facilitated gender-based violence. That it's always it's also brought to the limelight when we are looking at these innovations and technology. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe you can help shed some light uh, speaking about the challenges that happen to ladies online yeah. and whatnot so what maybe shed some light on some of the ills that happen in the digital space oh my goodness we have to start from there are many there are so many we can start with mm -hmm. cyber bullying we can starting we can also begin with trolling trolling is a way mm. that uh, women are silenced online and if you silence my voice stephanie yeah. how can i be able to advocate for what women stand for how can i be able to bring the voice that women are facing such certain challenges in the society 
So if you sil silence my voice through trolling, it also it's a factor that contributes to online gender-based violence. Okay, so that is, yeah, is one of it's them. a challenge. It's a challenge. We also mm -hmm. have harassment. These are digital harassments that happen both online and offline. Um, the harassments can also be catered under stalking also because you figure out when you're using your phone a message pops up on Facebook and you're like who's this mm -hmm. okay maybe you accepted the friend request just uh, you know that's the how we how, how we do it yeah innocently yeah. Mm -hmm. you accepted the request you get the request he DMs you or she DMs you you don't know who it is you don't know their background and they start to always stalking your photos, stalking where you work, stalking you. You can figure out some women are even stalked outside work. So we know there was factor. this person. Yeah. Um, there's a, one of the presenters uh, at some point in KBC, mm -hmm. previously in KBC. Yeah. There's a fan who stalked her. He knew even where she stayed and it became so uncomfortable and you don't feel safe anymore. So it's something that actually happens. Yeah. That is actually what I was going to talk about next. It's called doxing, whereby mm. a person can be able to, inv to get your personal information from your address to your location, to your ID. Uh, ID. And it, it's not uh, the information he gets is not using it for good purposes, but for malicious purposes. Mm -hmm. Just like that uh, story of, of the presenter. Mm -hmm. He or she might have used the doxing feature. So they can be able to use that as also it it also it's also a form of harassment. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So do you <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Like any information they can get all the information that they need till they know my house number. Yes, they know your house number. You know how you Oh, okay, in our daily lives, we usually order things online, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We order our food, we order our what, but we need to oh, order yeah. safely. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about next, mm -hmm. tackling gender online based violence. So uh, with that, someone, somebody can be able to get your information. Okay. Um, basically, when you're using, uh, most times when you're using public Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. you get that we have the black hackers. The black well, hackers, yes. Mm -hmm. The black has, hackers are able to hack your phone through public Wi-Fi. It is very easy for them. Mm -hmm. So they are able to get your every information. Even when you're doing mobile transactions, including bank transactions, you are advised to shut off your data so that you do it. Okay. So you figure out that those are the challenges that women are facing. They do not know how to, how to, do, how to keep safe online, how to do cyber hygiene. Okay, and yeah. you're going to tell us all about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, yes. what are the forms of, yeah. Okay, apart from stalking, trolling, we have something that is called um, phishing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the new form of, uh, I, I think you've uh, seen some of the scam emails, scam messages that we get it's online. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so when you click to on that link, do you know you have given your personal information to someone maybe in the U.S.? In okay. Canada or so here, yeah. even in Kenya, isn't it zillion links on your number? Oh, click this link. Yes, Nivas click this is link. Giving what, what, and Nivas is actually not giving. It's not giving. Out. They're just fishing you out. They're fishing your information out. Mm. So you get that they are basically focusing on your credit cards and your bank account. Look at that. Yes. Okay. So, so anytime you just press my, let's say my password is one two five four. Mm -hmm. The person gets it, and they can take days and ages just looking at your account. For you to study your and account. study your account properly, Stephanie. Where? Yes. <laughs> the streets so are not safe. <laughs> they, they, they can be safe. That's what they I'm can doing. be safe. They can yeah. be safe. That's why we are celebrating this day mm -hmm. because the rights are going to be met for okay. all women and girls. All right. Yes. Uh, and are all this under cyberbullying? Um, or is cyberbullying a okay. standalone? Okay, I can say it's also uh, cyber bullying is a standalone because bullying, um, bullying basically is threats, mm -hmm. false threats. There is threats. Um, there is um, also stalking is part of it. Now we we differentiate them so that um, people understand that it's not all under cyber bullying, but it is a different perspective of when you look at um, mm -hmm. the the dangers that are there towards the net. 
like different, um, how can I put this, the different dockets that they are there. If we all put them under cyberbullying, we can't understand. We just say, ah, fishing, you only cyberbullying, no one knows who's fish, fishing is. Fishing is. Yeah, yeah, so we will, uh, in order to get the right amount of information, we need to now categorize them into fishing, into mm -hmm. stalking, into yeah. cyber harassment and trolling and all that, yes. Okay. Yeah. So for when this happens to, to women, what they what do we stand to lose as a society because you said that you know if i'm being harassed online then chances are i don't want to be online you know yeah. so what what do we stand to lose as a society it's quite sad that we stand to lose a lot as a society mm -hmm. uh, i can use a quote i don't know if i can remember the quote correctly but the quote says yeah. a home without a daughter is like a river without a source a home without a daughter is like a, a home a home without a daughter is like a river without a source. Yes, now that brings me to my next point. Mm -hmm. When somebody is bullied in the society, especially a woman, it affects the children, it affects the families, it affects the community as a whole. How so? How so? Mm -hmm. When a woman in a house, maybe say you're in a station, mm -hmm. do something wrong, you're bullied, you go back home, you can't even take care of your children. The family starts breaking down. And then you get into isolati isolation. You get into depression as a woman, mm -hmm. leading you to have suicidal thoughts. And the community loses you and your impact towards it. So wow. I've broken it down to how the, it happens. The impact. Yes, the yes. impact. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we lose the voices of women. Women can be able to identify the critical things that are happening in the society, especially when they are, you know, we are motherly, we mm -hmm. are affectionate, we are able to s emphasize on the issues that are happening in the society. So we lose the voices mm -hmm. that we have in the society. Apart from that, we also, I hope I'm not taking you too fast. No, 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 we're <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. Apart from that, we also have the FGMs going on. We have yeah. the early marriages going on. How can we be, be able to know them? How can you be able to identify those areas? If not somebody just taking a phone, nowadays the phones are very efficient, mm -hmm. take a clip, put it on social media, within no time, TikTok, LinkedIn, all those social media platforms are seeing what is happening. So it is easy to get the perpetrators, you yeah. see? So it is a very essential key uh, factor that affects our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and why is it that is it mostly women that are targeted are victims of online gender-based violence? Pardon? Is it mostly women that are victims of online gender-based violence? No, not women only. We have men who also face the same. Mm -hmm. Because gender, when we define gender, especially both in the sides. tech space, it's both sides. Yes. We have women and men. Mm -hmm. But we figure out that when it comes to the women, it is more intense. It is more intense because yeah. now women are, are now mm -hmm. being used as sources of income yeah. when they do something wrong. Mm -hmm. So they're using them just because you are, you're being shamed. That's when you get maybe companies X ads. That's when you're getting um, mula from all uh, from money from everywhere. everywhere. Yes. Yeah. So you figure out you are being used as a form of shame in the society. Which For those people, yeah, which is very wrong. For those people who are developing as bloggers now think I have to remove my clothes, I have to do something extravagant so that I can be used as an, as a, as an impact towards the society and also as a form of income for themselves. So mm -hmm. it is really affecting our society. Okay. Yes. Now, so that brings me to the question, what needs to be done to, to curb the online gender-based violence? What are some of the tools that are there? Yes, there's so many tools. I will start by with our tool at Kiktanet. Okay. We have been championing, championing online gender-based violence since the year 2011 because mm -hmm. we are online company since the year 2006. Okay. And we have been championing it in, under a study we called, we called the dark sides of the internet, whereby okay. it covered the women. The dark sides of the internet. Yes. So we were looking at the yeah. email scammers. It's, it's found actually in our website at kiktanet.or.ke. Uh, uh, okay. And you, with this, you can find the studies that we have done. So with um, having seen all this happening 
in the community of tech, especially to women, we decided that one of the things that we will do is to tackle online gender-based violence is come about come about with come up about with a learning module that is called the digital inquiry kit where it is tackling the safety uh, our module is module 5 it's tackling mm -hmm. safety of online women uh, safety of women online okay yes especially in the in the, the in the digital space okay so yeah. someone goes through that and then they have the knowledge around what yeah. they need to do yeah so it is a basically a self-paced module mm -hmm. it is a 90 minute module whereby a woman can go through it and learn what do i do when somebody uh, attacks me mm -hmm. so you figure out there's so many things that one can do once i i think i mentioned earlier cyber hygiene yeah so in cyber hygiene it involves okay stephanie what do you do when you get bullied online yeah the first thing you have to document it. Document have, it? Yes, doc by document it is like taking a screenshot. Okay. Okay? Just mm. taking a screenshot. Just take Having a screenshot. Having an evidence. Having an evidence. What's happening? Of uh -huh. what is happening. Because you, you need evidence. Mm -hmm. You can just not say out of nowhere, oh, I'm being bullied. Oh, I'm. You need <laughs> you to know, show you it. You need to show it. Okay. After you do that, you report. How do you report? These <laughs> applications have places where they write reports on your settings. Mm -hmm. When you go through your settings, there's somebody written report. Okay, yeah. So, and you can specify what report you want to give. Mm -hmm. Is it somebody stalking you? Is it somebody uh, insulting you as a woman? Yeah, so you report like that. After you report, you tell five of your friends, report for me this account. So it becomes very effective. Okay. So after they've reported their account, there's um, the Office of the, um, uh, of the Data Protection Commission, whereby they accept um, this um, report, they accept these reports on online uh, gender-based so violence. Let me, yes. let me pause, pause you just for a second there. So yeah. if I report on Facebook, if I take the screenshot, send, do I send the screenshot or do I just go and report? Uh, say this person, I'm getting insults from this account, and then that's it. Okay, so what you do uh -huh. uh, when it comes to Facebook, necessarily um, Facebook, Twitter, if they give you the option of adding the image or documentation, please do. Mm -hmm. You're adding evidence. But now when it comes to the physical reporting of here, yes, the Office now, of, yes, the, of the Data Protection, protection. Commission, mm -hmm. or even the police station where there's a gender desk, you will go with the evidence, say my name is Stephanie, or my name is Nema, and on this date and this date, this guy insulted me and said this and this, my life is <laughs> at, at stake, risk. at yeah. risk. Mm -hmm. Because you never know what next. He might insult you the next day he's appearing at your workplace, or maybe he's appearing where you're having brunch with your friends mm -hmm. and he's just looking at you and you're like what can i do yeah, but with reporting and five people reporting about the the the, the account it is shut down and you're given a a space whereby you can now mm -hmm. live freely okay. and say that i have protected myself from the violence mm -hmm. yes so that okay. is also another way Mm -hmm. called cyber hygiene so that's cyber hygiene yeah. and this is not only for by women in tech mm -hmm. uh, women in digital spaces no. it's all for any social media for any user. social me media user mm -hmm. and uh, why we specify yeah. it on women it's because it happens to a lot of women yeah in the society and we need to voice it so that this information it this is it's disseminated effectively towards the society okay yeah. amazing yeah now uh, before we come to a close yes what what is it about um, the the men being uh, having more careers in tech than women? <laughs> that is a very interesting question. Yeah. So um, what I can say this about tech mm -hmm. is that tech was considered a male kind of career, mm -hmm. a male kind of you know, when you want to fix your computer, who's the first person you go to? It's a male. A <laughs> man, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> you not consider me, even if I'm in the tech space. Yeah, you're like, ah, we are lazy, yeah, yeah. competent. Ah, ah, really, no, probably really not. Yeah. Yes, so with that thinking and our cultural constraints that we have towards tech is what has brought this, uh, that women cannot involve themselves in tech. You see? Okay, yeah. yeah. And also, I can say, um, in that regard, mm -hmm. We figured out that in the grassroots level, level yeah. women are not able to 
engage in social spaces, they are prohibited. They are told, uh, you, have, you have to do cooking, you have to do washing. Even girls, you don't have time to go to Facebook and block that account and document it. You see, yeah. there is so many things. And also to learn the models that are there. Not only our company has the models, the models are online and they are actually free. Yes, mm -hmm. and also for our company is, be is good because you can now be satisfied that you have gone through the course and while you're getting the certification, you can now disseminate the information towards the, so the society mm -hmm. and the grassroots level. Wow, yeah. you're getting literacy for free. For free. And you can empower others, you can with, the empower information others with information that you have. And yes. there's something that I read from your website um, that you, uh, it's written, uh, GBV, uh, poor digital, digital literacy and lack of awareness in cybersecurity has made women in all their diversity to be excluded from internet governance and economic spaces. Uh, mind to expound on this? All right, so GBV is actually, is actually gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Gender-based violence for women is brutal. It's brutal to the sense that yeah. now let me just say this, the UN is now considering online gender-based violence a health issue. A health issue? A health issue. It's now being, it's taken a new leaf. So from now. it affects yes. the mental health? It affects the mental health of the woman. Mm -hmm. Now, how can a woman engage in such a platform and her mental health is not even there? She doesn't have the mental capacity. Yeah. When it comes to digital liter literacy, we realize that mm -hmm. most of the hubs that were being set in the grassroots levels are now closed, mm -hmm. or they were closed long ago. The hubs that are supposed to teach the community on what tech is, on how to go about this violence, yeah. you know, it is closed. And um, the third one was kindly. Uh, the third one was um, lack of awareness in cybersecurity. Yes, we are not aware. We don't know, we don't we have information. We don't have information, and it's not that the information is not there. It is just that the people who are giving information, we are like this, and the people who want information, they're like this. Yeah, so, so we need to work together as a community. When I give you this information, maybe today you will go and tweet in your social media, I learned this and this from online gender-based violence. You don't necessarily have to mention me or mention what it, where it came from, but just from your knowledge, it helps the society. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. with that, we can be able to be innovative and in technology and also equalize gender in tech and the digital space. Okay, so when, yes. we, have, when we address these issues, then yeah. we are at par. We are at par. Mm -hmm. We become at par, and this gives us opportunities in business, you know, nowadays businesses have gone online. Yeah. Imagine a so woman who's um, pregnant, has been laid off work, and she needs to something to feed herself. Maybe she's a single mom. Mm -hmm. So what will she do? She'll have to engage in gig economy. Gig e economy is the economy that is found in tech. And while engaging in this, she'll have to air her products, and she will engage, she'll get the bullies. You see? Yeah. So it is a spectrum that's... Um, needs unity. Mm -hmm. We just need to learn the whole spectrum of how it is towards um, advancing in tech, in tech as women and girls. Okay. Yeah. And even with that, we'll be able to engage in matters internet governance, have yes. our voice heard have also. Have our voice is heard, yes. Okay. Finally, finally, as we <laughs> conclude, <Yeah. laughs> I've been mean, concluded for the first, I don't know how many minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where do you see the future of women in tech from where you're seated? From where I'm seated, it mm. is possible. It is possible. There is nothing that is impossible. Mm -hmm. It is just that we do not have to wait for the International Women's Day so that we can be engaging women in tech. We have to do it as a daily basis thing. We mm -hmm. have to make it a habit. So it is possible for me to start with me and you as girls, or we can say we are women. Yeah. It starts with us. It is possible to have gender equality. It is possible to have all the innovations and tech we, we can think or imagine about as women. And it is possible to get um, jobs as women in tech. Because as for Safaricom, they, they are having a safety mentorship program that um, where I was um, previously before yesterday at the University of Nairobi, Sarah okay. Wambui was talking about it. And they need women who can 
take the infrastructure of tech forward mm -hmm. because the money is situated for women. So wow. they need women to do so. So the opportunities so, yes, for there women are in tech. So many opportunities in tech. So mm -hmm. it is a growing platform. It is start it starts with me and you and we can do it regardless of what it takes. We wish we need to start and never stop. As I said, let us not just do it in the International Women's Day, but also let's make it habitual so that we can be able to dis disseminate this information properly towards the society. Wow, amazing. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much, Nema. <laughs> yes. Where can people get you on social media or maybe your company if they need information on yes. uh, you know, how to keep safe online and everything that you have? All right. That's um, your camera. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Um, for as for my company, you can get us um, under the website Kenya ICT Action Network. And um, with this, you will be able to get all the modules that we have done towards cyber security. We have done data protection. We are also currently doing data protection uh, podcasts, whereby we are engaging the community as well. And as for me, you will get me on Twitter as Nema Masitsa. Um, that is my day-to-day um, -day platform. And also at LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Stephanie. This has been a very in Interesting, Interesting conversation. conversation. I, I, I'm living yes. here enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you very much, Neva. Thank you it's, so much. Uh, we we'll love to have you again to speak on something. Wow. You know, wow. creating Thank awareness you. is what we are all about. Yes. So that has been Nema Masitsa, who is the communication specialist at uh, Kenya ICT Action Network, talking to us about how to you know, keep safe online and what we need to do to have women in this space is because uh, there are many opportunities for you as a woman in this space. So don't shy away from it. I hope you've taken something from this. Uh, it has been Sport and Tech, but more is to come your way on Matters uh, Entertainment Thursday that Val will be coming up next with. So stick with us uh, we take a short break we'll be right back